Hi guys, welcome to today's video where we'll be talking about reproduction, human reproduction, mainly focusing at the fertilization and early development of zygote, as well as the formation of placenta. Okay, so this is uterus. So, every month in female, the ovum will release an egg into the fallopian tube. And this process is known as ovulation. Okay? So, this is the egg cell and there are surrounding cells around the egg cell known as corona radiata and there is also a protective layer known as zona pellucida During sexual intercourse, approximately 300 to 500 million of sperms are released in an ejaculation. When the sperm reach the vagina, the sperm will swim up in the uterus towards the fallopian tube, and the movement is aided by the muscular contractions of the uterus and also the fallopian tube. So once the sperm come into contact with the ovum, the sperm will release a special enzyme to penetrate the plasma membrane of the egg cell. Once it happens, the sperm will discard its tail and the nucleus will move toward the nucleus of the egg cell. And the nuclei of the sperm cell and the egg cell will then fuse, forming a diploid nucleus that contains 23 chromosomes from each cell. And the fertilized ovum is now known as a zygote. And this will indicate the day one of the new life. And once this happens, menstrual cycle stops and the 9 month gestation period starts. And this period is known as pregnancy. Then, the zygote will slowly move towards the uterus with the help of the peristaltic contraction of the fallopian tube and the action of the cilia along the fallopian tube. And during its journey to the uterus, the zygote will undergo many divisions. The first division will form a two-cell embryo and then into a four-cell embryo, eight-cell embryo and eventually into a solid ball of cells known as morula. By about day 5, the developing embryo will reach the uterus and at this point of time, the morula has developed into blastocyst. And this usually happens around day 5. So what is blastocyst? Why is it called blastocyst? Cyst is a fluid filled mass. So it is called blastocyst because it is a fluid filled sphere consisting of an outer layer of cells known as trophoblasts and a group of cells inside the sphere known as inner cell mass. Then, the implantation will usually happen around day 7. Implantation simply means that the embryo will eventually attach itself to the uterine wall. Okay. 
So now the blastocyst with its inner cell mass becomes firmly embedded in the endometrium. Now let's take a closer look at the uterine wall during implantation. consists of a layer of outer cell known as trophoblast and a mass of cell known as inner cell mass and this inner cell mass will eventually develop into embryo okay while the trophoblast will penetrate the wall of uterus by forming finger-like projections known as chorionic villi and this will form the fetal portion of the placenta all right so after two months the organs will start to appear on the embryo and the embryo begins to take the shape of a human being after this stage of transformation, the embryo is known as fetus and the gender can be established by ultrasound scan. The site where the fetal blood and the maternal blood come into contact is known as placenta and there will be a cord that connects the fetus to the placenta which is known as umbilical cord it is also important to note that the fetus will be enclosed in a membrane known as amnion inside the membrane amnion there is amniotic fluid. Amniotic fluid functions to protect the fetus by absorbing the shocks and cushioning it from any physical damage. Now let's look at the structure of placenta. Okay. So placenta is basically the site of exchange of nutrients and waste products between the fetus and its mother. It also acts as an endocrine gland that secretes estrogen and progesterone. And both these hormones are important to maintain a thick and blood-rich endometrium throughout the pregnancy. As you can see here, in order to form a placenta, the blood capillaries of the uterine wall have to break down to release the blood within the placenta. Okay, so umbilical cord is a tube with one umbilical vein and two umbilical arteries. The umbilical vein will carry oxygenated blood rich in oxygen and nutrients from the placenta to the fetus. Okay. While the two umbilical arteries will carry the deoxygenated blood, which is blood rich in carbon dioxide and waste product from the fetus to the placenta back to the mother's circulation. number of blood capillaries in the chorionic villi will provide a large surface area for the diffusion of materials. Okay, remember the keyword is diffusion. 
It means that even though the blood capillaries of the fetus and the mother are close to each other, but in fact, the, their blood actually do not mix. This is important because it prevents the mixing of the blood groups of the mother and the fetus, which may be incompatible. This is to prevent clumping of red blood cells known as agglutination. And the separate blood will also ensure that the fine blood vessels of the fetus do not burst as a result of high pressure caused by the flow of the mother's blood. Last but not least, it also serves to prevent certain harmful bacteria or toxins from mother's blood from entering the fetus. Okay, thank you.